Well, good morning, friends. I'm just going to take a second to share our worship service. And I want to invite you to do the same thing. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Community United Church of Christ. Um, we gather here during the pandemic in this virtual worship space. And I want you to know that wherever you are gathered this morning, um, even though we are scattered, that we are made one in Christ. And we're so glad that you're with us today. So as I said, it's Palm Sunday. And if you're a local CUCCer, you got a worship kit this week. So go and grab the palm that came in that worship kit. Um, but if um, if you're not a local CUCC or if you're a guest or a visitor who's joining us or if you live far away, go and grab, I don't know, a branch from outside or something from a house plant or um, take off your jacket and be ready to wave it whenever it's time. Um, we have yet again this morning another installment from the worship series, A Sanctified Art, which or again and again, that's the worship series, and it's brought to us by the uh, Worship and Arts Collective, A Sanctified Art. This week, we remember that Jesus' entry into Jerusalem was not a risk-free palm party. It was a protest parade. It was a protest against those in power a parade to prepare the way for a different kind of king. And this was all happening with plots to kill Lazarus and Jesus building in the background. We are reminded that the crowds, they were brave to show up that day and that Jesus drew on courage to face his journey to the cross. The journey to the cross it continues in real time in these days in which we live as Christ is crucified again and again, anywhere violence shows up in the world, in gun violence in this country, in Myanmar this week as they experienced their bloodiest week yet since the military coup there, in Indonesia this morning as a suicide bomber injured over a dozen folks leaving Palm Sunday Mass. And again and again in this country as white supremacist violence this week took shape in the form of legislation signed by a governor. The journey to the cross, it continues in real time. And as the crowd we must continue to be brave and we must continue to show up. As our worship begins this morning, I want to remind you that the root of the word courage, another word for bravery, the root of the word courage is kur, meaning heart. Courage, it is found deep within us at our heart level. Drawing upon courage is both internal and external. We often find it when we most need it, when everything else has been stripped away. And so what needs to be stripped away from you this morning in order to find your courage, in order to be brave? That's the question that we're asking this morning. And as we gather, we ask who are we? Who's gathered together? Well, church, we are young and old and middle-aged. We are gay and straight and in between. We are single and partnered, happy and sad, confused and inspired. We are street smart and college educated. Some of us can't pay our bills and some of us have more than enough to share. Who are we? We are God's people. We are the body of Christ. And we are gathered the, together this morning. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And we really mean that. Friends, welcome to worship. Let's settle in as we listen to this morning's prelude. Mm -hmm. 
Let's join together in our call to worship. The story of faith is a story of courage. It took courage for John the Baptist to prepare the way. It took courage for Mary to say, here I am. It took you, care, courage for the disciples to drop their nets and follow Jesus. It took courage for the paralyzed man's friends to lower him through the roof. It took courage for Peter to walk on water. It took courage for Zacchaeus to give half of his possessions to the poor. It took courage for Jesus to enter Jerusalem on a donkey. Faith has never been easy. It is a journey of courage. Again and again, God, show us the way. Let us worship a brave and courageous God. Please join me in our opening prayer. God, if we could buy our way closer to you, we'd sell everything we have. If we could work our way to you, we'd never take a day off. If we could walk our way to you, we'd keep, on, keep our walking shoes on the, and never take them off. But I know, we know, we cannot buy or work or walk our way closer to you. We must listen to our way closer to you. So, holy God, as you have so often done again and again, open our ears. Clear out the self-talk that keeps us from you. Dust out the negativity and distractions. Remove any doubt hindering our way. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is Hosanna, Loud Hosanna, with a very special second verse. Let's sing together. Children say, to 
in the chat over here on Zoom just to ask if we could please have Chase's dog and the potted ficus trees every year for Palm Sunday. And I think that would bring us all a lot of joy. And those kiddos were awfully, awfully cute. I want to thank everybody who um, who participated in the uh, in putting the videos together. We're all a little weary at this point in the pandemic. Um, and so thanks. Thanks to some campus ministry folks for making that really extra special. Friends, let's turn our hearts now to our prayer of confession. Hear this call to confession. Glennon Doyle, who is a, a pretty famous author and writer, frequently uses the phrase, we can do hard things. It's one of her many mottos in life. And as a result, this declaration, we can do hard things, has become an anthem for so many people. You can buy those words on poster prints and greeting cards, on coffee mugs. I have it as a magnet on my refrigerator. <laughs> Excuse me. These five simple words aren't particularly radical. So when I stop to think about why they have caught on for so many, and really grabbed hold. I can only assume that it's because life and faith require courage. Vulnerability requires courage. Relationships require courage. Advocacy and justice require courage. Facing our privilege, it requires courage. Faith requires courage. Even confession requires courage. So dear ones, let us do hard things. Let us confess together, trusting that God is always there cheering us on in every courageous act. Let us pray. God of palm branches, hosannas and hallelujahs, we confess we love a good Palm Sunday celebration. We love the sound of a joyful parade. We love shouting hallelujah. We love that Palm Sunday means that Easter is just around the corner. We love good news. However, if we slow down and pay attention, we know that Palm Sunday was not a walk in the park for you. There was risk. There was fear. There was the threat of violence. 
you were leading a, a peaceful protest against an unjust empire and the world knew it. Forgive us for glossing over the courage this day took. Remind us that the story of faith is a story of courage. And even we, even we can do hard things. With hope, we confess these things and we pray. Amen. Family of faith, hear these words of assurance. Even when we gloss over the truth, even when our courage fails us, even when we doubt that we can do hard things, God believes in us. God loves us. God forgives us and restores us to new life. Hear and believe the truth. We are known. We are loved. We are forgiven again and again and again. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Amen. So in this newness of life that we are given, uh, I want to invite you to share signs of peace with each other. You can type peace be with you in the chat or in the comments and over here on uh, over here on Zoom, I'm going to have Ilsa unspotlight me so that whenever you unmute yourself and say peace be with you, we can see you too. Friends, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, everyone. Peace be with you, everyone. Peace be with you. Peace. Happy almost Easter. <laughs> so I want to say um, peace be with you to everybody who's over here on Facebook. Peace to Ramona and Nancy and Doris and Brittany and Kyle. Peace to Janelle and Pastor Angie out there in Katuit. Peace to David and Tina and John. Peace to um, Kurt and to Jeannie. Peace to John Aline and May. Peace to my dad. Peace to Rachel and Faith and Kara. Uh, peace to Tina and Jesus. And peace to, I think, I think that's everybody so far. There might be a few more who haven't chimed in with anything yet. Peace be with you all. So um, it is time for us to have the kiddos gather around. We're going to look at, um, oh, peace to Izzy. Peace, Izzy. Um, we're going to watch, or we're going to look at another piece of artwork. So um, I'm actually going to ask, um, Ilsa, I'm going to ask you to look at the chat, if you don't mind, and let me know if anybody answers. So we're going to look at a piece of artwork. Oh, which I realize I didn't have ready. Give me two seconds, guys. <clears throat> so um, this piece of artwork that we're looking at, um, it is another piece of artwork that was especially made for this series, which I think is really, really exciting that there are artists who are doing this, this good work of helping, helping people of faith think theologically about their faith, to think about it in creative ways. Let's take a look at this. Now this is, um, it's a block print. And this is made by Reverend Lauren Wright Pittman. It's a hand carved block print, um, which means she took a, like a piece of wood and she, everything that you see that's in white, that's what she carved away. And then everything that's in black and that little bit that's in gold, those things were what was left on that piece of wood and she spread ink on the wood and then she pressed that wood into paper and that's how this was made. So I want to ask our kiddos, what do you see? Over in the chat, uh, Cora has spotted some palms there and, uh, and there's a donkey in the middle of this 
That is right. Yeah. And do you see the palms? They're everywhere. They're at the bottom, they're on the sides, and they are at the top too. And then there's this sweet looking donkey here on the right in the middle. What else do you see? Lots of people have pointed out that there are hands in this picture, lots of hands. That's right. There are hands at the bottom that look like they're, they're reaching um, and there are hands at the top and they are pointing. What else do you see? One of the harms want to be sure that we recognize that that donkey's getting a hug. Oh, I am so glad that you noticed that. I want to tell you, I have studied art my whole life, and I don't think I've ever seen an artist's depiction of Jesus hugging the donkey that takes him into Jerusalem. And it and do you notice that Jesus's eyes are closed? He's hugging the donkey, but it seems like, I don't know, the first time I looked at this, I thought that maybe he was taking a nap. What do you think of that? Anybody have any ideas? What might it say to us that the artist wants us to see Jesus really um, loving on this donkey and resting on this donkey. Not a resting, but resting. So I want to wait just a Megan says that yeah, Megan says that sometimes when she's scared, she closes her eyes, to get ready to face the thing she's afraid of. Oh, Megan, that's such a good, that's such a good, um, yeah, that's such a good reflection that, that sometimes when we're scared, which means we have to find our courage, right? That Megan takes a moment to close her eyes and to find her courage inside of herself. Oh, that's a, that's a really great image. Any other ideas? And Christy reminds us that a lot of us find comfort and peace in connection with, with our pets or with other people. That's right. Yeah. A lot of us have, um, have animals that we love to snuggle with, right? They really help us to calm down. In fact, you know, the University of Illinois has some, some service dogs that are that they bring out, especially during stressful times in students' lives, because, because loving on those pets helps people to calm down. I bet Jesus was really nervous before he, um, before that parade started, um, because this parade, it meant something. Um, see, there was a, a, a military ruler on the other side of town, who was also doing a parade. He was on top of a horse, a war horse, not a donkey. And donkeys, um, then and now, they were really um, servant animals, right? Donkeys helped farmers in their fields. And so it means something that Jesus was getting on top of an animal that was meant to serve other people and that he was doing this at the same time, counter to this, this military protest that was happening on the or the military parade and symbol of strength, right? That was happening on the other side of town. Then I wonder if he just needed a minute to rest and to calm himself down and to close his eyes and to find his courage. The artist has helped us use our divine imagination to imagine that Jesus did that. And maybe we need to do that too. Maybe whenever we need to be brave, maybe we need to love on our fur babies and close our eyes and find our courage. We have to do a lot of 
being brave these days, don't we? Let's all remember to rest uh, and to and to find things that bring us comfort. Hmm? Hey, listen, everybody. Thank you so much for thank you so much for coming to the children's time. Um, I'm going to send kiddos to a breakout room. So, um, so uh, if I don't send you to the breakout room, be sure to put in the chat that you need to go. And um, Matthew is going to um, read our scripture for us. I am indeed. I have a little disclaimer though. First, uh, you got, everybody heard about loving pets. Well, my cat Whitman likes to talk, so don't be surprised if you hear a few meows during this. So, <laughs> whether we take what is written in the Bible as fact, metaphor, myth, or story, let us listen now for the meaning they might hold for us on this day. Our first sacred reading from the Gospels is uh, from John chapter 12, verses 1 through 9. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, who he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of, of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the, his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She brought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the uh, great crowd of Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. Together, let us say, may the Spirit bless us with wisdom and wonder as we ponder the meaning of these words for our lives. Okay, friends, I just want to check if there's anybody else who needs to go to the breakout room. I think we've moved everybody. Okay, our next hymn is All Glory, Laud, and Honor. Let's sing. Thank you. 
We begin this morning with a poem. It's entitled Peaceful Protest, and it's by Reverend Sarah R. I wonder if Jesus could feel his heartbeat in his throat the way I do when I'm afraid. I wonder if he had to take deep breaths in through his nose, out through his mouth, tricking his body into a, a state of calm. I wonder if he was nauseous like I am when I'm headed into a hard conversation. I wonder if he had to summon his courage, tucking fear away so that he could hold on to what mattered most with both hands. I wonder, because time has taught us that it is not uncommon for a peaceful protest to start or end with an unjust death. So I wonder, did he know? Was he afraid? Did anyone see it? I want to hold what matters most with both hands. Peaceful Protest by Reverend Sarah R. Friends, as we prepare for the word preached, would you join with me your hearts and minds in prayer? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I'm sharing words this week from Reverend T. Denise Anderson. Reverend Anderson is the coordinator for racial and intercultural justice with the Presbyterian Mission Agency and the former co-moderator of the 222nd General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church USA. Reverend Anderson is also one of the writers and curators of a sanctified art. In John's gospel, she says, the role of the sometimes mysterious woman who anoints Jesus before his death belongs to Mary, sister of Martha, sister of Lazarus, whom Jesus resurrected from the dead. Judas, is, uh, Judas objects to the act's expense, but Jesus points out that there are still opportunities to address poverty. The poor will be with you always, he says. In other words, there are still opportunities, Judas, for you, if that's your desire. Let's remember that it was not his desire. And the spotlight is on someone we now understand as a scoundrel and who'd later play a major role in the plot to crucify Jesus. Everyone's motivations are exposed in this passage. That happens in life sometimes, doesn't it? And this week's events are foreshadowed. That happens too sometimes in life, doesn't it? We see things that should be warnings of what is to come. Today, all eyes are on Jesus, and that's a problem for the chief priests who then set their eyes on Lazarus so that they can undermine Jesus. We witness as we read this passage what is both secret and open. We know everybody's backstory and everyone's motivation. And then everything gets set into motion. Jesus's entry into Jerusalem is a spectacle. It's a protest. It's a counter narrative to the empire's extravagance and repression. It happens opposite to the Roman governor's own parade into Jerusalem for the Passover. What Jesus is doing on the other side of town, on that servant animal, 
a different kind of parade. It's the people's declaration of a different reign, different from the emperor's reign, different from the empire, different from the ruling class, different from the people who hold power. The use of that donkey, it's messianic imagery. This is, it's political theater and it would ramp up the plots against Jesus's life. And because that is true, let us remember what we said at the beginning of worship, which is courage is derived from the Latin word cur, which means heart. When we consider the full Palm Sunday picture, we realize that these are frightful times and we know we must take heart. We must find our courage. We must be brave. We must be able to do hard things. So much is happening that is both hopeful and terrifying. Tensions and tears are plentiful. It was true in Jesus' day, and it is true today in our world, in our still struggling with a worldwide pandemic world, in our still wrestling with gun violence world, in our military coups happen world. Let us remember that the word of God encourages us to take heart again and again. We are encouraged to take heart amid the drama. The script is unsettling, this is true. But remember, we have not yet reached the end. Friends, if we unpack Reverend T. Denise Anderson's assertion that Jesus's entry into Jerusalem is political theater, then we must ask what that means. What message is Jesus signaling to the empire, to his followers, to the ones plotting to kill him? What message is he sending to each of those different groups of people, to us as Jesus's followers? to those within the crowds who are devoted to him or at minimum sympathetic to him. Um, what message is he sending? How do we act amid the pilots of our day? And we must ask ourselves: why does Jesus choose this public and subversive display? What is he inviting us to do as we seek to follow him? I mean, it would be easy just to avoid all of those who are plotting against him and enter Jerusalem quietly. It would be easy for us to be quiet, but that's not what Jesus is signaling us to do. So what does that mean? I mean, when there's so much at stake, why not be quiet? And yet, and yet again and again and again, we are beckoned to shout Hosanna along with the crowd. As we consider the historical context of this text, our, our liturgical Hosannas, we have to remember that they're not simply shouts of praise. They are also theological assertions. Our hosannas mark what we believe about God and how God shows up in our world again and again and again, anytime crucifixion looms. God shows up in the world humbly as a servant, seeking out to serve the least of these every single time. That's what our declaration of Hosanna means today in the face of all crucifixions that loom in front of us. That's our theological assertion. 
And so we must take heart. We must find our courage because the journey to the cross continues. So friends, keep looking to Christ to save us. Keep shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Christ, save us. Save us. That's how we find heart. So friends, be brave and continue to follow. Amen. Our morning prayer will begin in a few moments. You are invited to go to the comments or chat and list our, your prayer requests there. Friends, we pause in our worship now to remember that again and again, we are called to the body of Christ, working together to make our world a more just, merciful, and caring place. This is what we do as a church, whether creating a space where college students feel safe to explore the big questions of life, feeding hungry people, good and nutritious meals, supporting one another through life's trials, gifting our children with a faith that will support them their whole lives long, or gathering week after week to worship, spreading a message of hope during this difficult time. This is what we do and who we are as a church. Our mission and ministry is made possible through the generosity of you, Community UCC's members and friends, and your gift of time, expertise, talent, and treasure. To make a financial gift to UCUCC, you can go to our website, www.community-ucc.org, where you can click Donate and Give. May God bless and multiply all that is offered. Friends, our morning anthem is Ride on King Jesus. Let's listen. Ride on King Jesus, no man can in the field. Ride on King Jesus, no man can in the field.
Friends scattered though we are, we pause now in worship to gather together as one mind and heart as we offer our prayers and petitions to God. I will offer your prayer petitions first from Zoom and then from Facebook. After each, I will say, God, in your mercy, and you're invited to respond, hear our prayers. Kathy asks for prayers for her father's dear friend, David, who is struggling with Alzheimer's. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Randy asks for prayers for David, who he says is constantly tired and has constant back pain. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Allison asks for prayers for Shaylin, who is facing serious health problems and who is struggling to finish a master's degree. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Allison also asks for prayers for Oscar, who is having growing pains and mourning the loss of normal activities for so long. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Linda offers prayers of thanksgiving for friends and family who take time to have meaningful conversations. God, in joy and in your mercy, hear our prayers. Megan also, or Megan asks for um, prayers for those whose mental health is suffering. May God bless and keep them. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Pastor Connie asks for or offers prayers of thanksgiving that her sister Judy has received a good report at her doctor's appointment and that uh, the bone is showing signs of healing again. Yes, God in your mercy, hear our prayers. Tom asks for prayers for a former coworker who's had a recent surgery and will need lots of physical therapy to recover. God in your mercy, hear our prayers. Megan asks for prayers for lawmakers to be wise and just and resist the temptation to entrench into the lie of white power. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Checking, checking Facebook, and I, I don't see any prayer requests there, um, but if there are some, we will catch those after the pastoral prayer. Um, two other prayer requests. Um, I've lifted up violence, of course, that has occurred in Myanmar and reports this, this morning of violence in Indonesia. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We also lift up this morning um, those who have been affected by these terrible um, moments of gun violence in our country, both in Virginia Beach and also in Boulder. I would mention that um, the police officer who was killed in Boulder was a friend to the United Church of Christ Church that is there in Boulder, and that my colleague, the Reverend Nicole Marsh, uh, Nicole LaMarsh, who serves <clears throat> um, that church, also called Community, United Church of Christ, um, was the former pastor in Ketuit, um, who we know because uh, my, my friend and colleague Angie serves there and we've worshiped with those, with those folks before. And so it brings it so much closer to home. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Friends, Scattered as we are, as I've said before in this service, we are drawn together by the Spirit's tether. We are joined together in one heart and mind as we offer all of these prayers and petitions to God. Let us pray. Holy, good, and gracious God, this morning as we celebrate your triumphal entry into Jerusalem, we are also humbled by what is asked of us, that as you look upon us and ask us to follow you, 
that it means we must find our courage. We must take heart. We must be brave. And God, you ask us to be brave no matter where it is that you would lead, whether that is into difficult conversations or difficult actions. Every little bit helps to bend that moral arc of the universe towards justice, Holy One. And so continue, continue, we ask, to hold us up on the wings of eagles so that knowing, knowing that you have us in the palm of your hands, we might be able to be brave and continue to follow wherever you lead. We are reminded, especially this week, God, that yes, you do lead us to the cross, but you also lead us on and into resurrection. And so Holy One, when we get stuck, stuck feeling as if, as if we found the end of the story, God, remind us, remind us that all of your stories always end in new life and that with every death, there is resurrection. Holy One, continue to remind us of that true thing so that we might not get weighed down with the reality of so much so much, so much crucifixion and death in this world. Hold us to that hope, God. We pray this morning, God, for all of those who are afraid, those who are sick, those who are hurting, those who are, who are sad, those who are weighed down and weary. God, we lift all of them and ourselves up to you. And we pray these things in the name of the one whose name we call this morning, in the name of the one we call Hosanna. And we pray the prayer that he taught us saying, our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Again, we keep this solemn fast, a gift of faith from ages past, this Lent which binds us lovingly to faith and hope and charity. Friends, we have a few more prayer requests from Facebook. Um, I'm going to offer the ones that I see, but um, Ilsa, I'm going to invite you um, if if we if I don't read all of them, it's because Facebook is being wonky. So if you could um, could catch those for me. Jesus asks for prayers for all of the young children, youth and families currently being held at the U.S. Mexico border. May there be a courageous response from our elected leaders to find a humane solution to this crisis. Yes. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Kara asks for prayers for her mom, Norma, whose health changes now necessitate full-time at-home care from wonderful professionals. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Tina asks for prayers for Congress and our president in these next few weeks, Prayers of thanks that our daughter was accepted into 
an OT doctoral program in North Dakota this fall. Prayers for our friend's elderly mom who got COVID three days before her scheduled second vaccine shot. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Joan, that's my aunt Joan, by the way, asks for prayers for a dear friend who was a victim of a sexual assault recently and for all women and girls worldwide who have endured abuse of all kinds. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Friends, I would also invite you to pray for Martha Seif. Um, Martha has been hospitalized this week undergoing a procedure. The procedure has gone well, um, but she and, she and her um, children would covet your prayers and your well wishes. If you'd like to send Martha a card, please do so. I just want to check to see if there are any other prayer requests. Um, Fred offers prayers for Rhonda and her health struggles as she's waiting for confirmation of uh, the operation that she needs. Prayers for her strength and hope and to fortify her faith. Thank you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. It is time for the commissioning of the community. That moment when we commission you to go out and be the church in the world. Local CUCCers, you received a worship supply kit for this week. I wanna thank the worship team and uh, everybody who delivered those and Carla in the office for putting them all together. Thank you all so much for caring so deeply about our faith community uh, that you've been willing to serve in this way. So you each received a palm for today. I wanna invite you to add that palm to your home altar space. You've also received there um, some, uh, some worship pages for Monday, Thursday. You'll find in this first page, some different um, prayer prompts, active prayer prompts for you to use at home. You can really do those throughout Holy Week, not just on Monday, Thursday. Uh, it also includes a, um, a, a finger labyrinth and a coloring page for Holy Week. And then there's a short order for worship uh, and we will gather on Monday, Thursday at 6.30 p.m. For, a, um, for a brief worship and communion service. You'll also find in your worship kit um, that we have this great resource from an illustrated, um, from Illustrated Ministries, which is this um, this, re this resurrection scene that you can color and set up. It's delightful. So I would invite you to do that. And there's a nail in your kit, which you're gonna use Friday evening at 6.30 here on Zoom for worship. And, and if you live not near us, uh, you just need a nail. Uh, any old nail will do but that's for Friday. And again, local folks, there's one other thing in your worship supply kit. You have a little wrapped gift. Don't open it until Easter morning, okay? And if you've already opened it, wrap it back up. Uh, we're going to open these during worship on Easter morning. Who has announcements this morning? Oh, uh, and I should also add that Julie worked, and I don't I don't see. Oh, here it is. Julie worked so hard um, to put together kits for our kids. And so like this is Violet's and there are special things in here for Violet. So I want to thank Julie as well. And kiddos, you've got um, some some fun things to do in your in your Holy Week kit. Who has announcements? Tom Ward, I see your hand. Yes, I just wanted to remind um, folks that the uh, Folks that identify as male will be joining each other on Zoom for breakfast on April Fool's Day. So it's, a, it's our first Thursday of the month, 
Um, and that's when we gather for breakfast via Zoom. If you'd like to participate and don't get the link normally, um, email me and I'll send it to you. Love to have you join us. We, we start at um, 7 a.m. on Thursday morning. And then part two is we have uh, Pub Theology has a new book that we will be starting not tomorrow, but the, a week from tomorrow. And it is entitled. All that uh, we save. All that we save, I think. All that we save. Um, so, yeah, mm, it wasn't prepared for that one. So, <laughs> if you want to learn more about that too, you can email me about that as well. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Anybody else have an announcement this morning? I see our youth ministry director, Jessica Smiley. Jessica. Yes, good morning. And just a reminder that we have youth group uh, for kiddos in sixth through 12th grade this afternoon by Zoom starting at 1.30. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jessica. Anybody else with announcements? Um, I want to mention, um, David Wilcox has reminded me here in the chat that there, there, there are a couple of labyrinths in um, town. If you'd like to go walk a real live labyrinth, there's one at Crystal Lake Park, and there's also one outside of McKinley Church, um, which is just a block over from our, from our church building. Um, and that might be a wonderful, wonderful way for you to, um, to focus on what matters during this Holy Week. I have two announcements for you. One is that in the Easter season, we're going to be offering um, a Bible study opportunity. And it is using some of those wonderful videos that we've used during worship here in the pandemic um, from the work of the people. This worship series is based on a book by Peter Enns, and it's for anybody who's ever had a complicated relationship with the Bible. Um, if you'd like to participate in this series, um, if you if you email Carla and let her know or email me, um, we're going to be getting that group together. We do need somebody to facilitate that group, but that is easy peasy. You don't need to feel like you have all the answers. You just need to use the discussion guide. Um, and there are lots of different entry points for this uh, for this Bible study. If you just wanna show up every week and watch the video with folks and then have a discussion, fantastic. If you wanna go a little deeper and read the book, um, then you can do that as well. So it's, it's an it's an easy entry point for people. Let Carla or myself know. Secondly, after Easter, we're going to be doing a worship series in the Easter season between now and Pentecost based on the Via Lucius, the way of light. So we're going to be focusing on all of the resurrection stories, reminding ourselves that resurrection is not a thing that happens once. It's a thing that happens again and again and again. So join us for that. Um, last but not least, oh, uh, Pub Theology, their book is called All We Can Save by Ayana Johnson and Catherine Wilkinson. So that's their next study. And Christy Brownfield, one of our mission co-chairs, has an announcement for you. Hey, good morning, everyone. I wanted to call your attention to something that's out happening in our community. On Tuesday, March 30th, our local chapter, the Champaign-Urbana chapter of the Showing Up for Racial Justice, or SURJ, has a Stop Asian Hate Rally. So it's slated to last from 4.30 to 6.30. However, the Facebook event does note that if you're only able to show up for a small amount of time, please show up if, um, when you can. They're meeting at the University and Walnut intersection in Champaign. And their blurb says, join us as we take to the sidewalks to show solidarity for the Asian American and Pacific Islander community. Come take part as we hold signs with the message, hashtag, hashtag stop Asian hate for cars and people passing by to observe. Um, I know that's a lot of information here. Uh, I will make sure that I send some info to Carla that we can get that out in an email to all of you and that we place that on our Facebook page. Thanks, Christy. And what day is that again? March 30th. March 30th. Okay. Thank you so much. 
Uh, one last announcement for you all. Kathy, Director of Music, Kathy Lee, wants you to know that there's no choir rehearsal this Wednesday, but choir members should <clears throat> check email about the Easter hymns. Um, next week, the Zoom room is going to open a little bit early uh, at 930 so that we can all eat Easter breakfast together if you would like to do that. Um, let's go out with a big sound. Our closing hymn today is God of Grace and Glory. Let's sing. chat one last announcement um this is from chase uh worship still needs a few readers for good friday uh and so if you'd like to contact chase please do that by phone um thanks for that oh friends as you leave this space again and again May your mouth speak of God's goodness and may your arms hold those in need. May your feet walk toward justice. May your heart trust its worth. May your soul dance in God's grace and may this be your rhythm again and again and again until God's promised day. In the name of the lover and the beloved and love itself, go with courage, go with heart. I've been saying it to you every week in Lent. Go with courage, go with heart, go in peace. Amen. Thanks for joining us for worship today. We will be here, same place, um, Thursday evening at 6.30, Friday evening at 6.30, and um, if you want to eat breakfast together on Easter morning, the Zoom room opens at 9.30, otherwise worship at 10.15. Friends, have a blessed and holy, holy week. Be well. <laughs>